okay. We up in here, man. I done, man, I done did so many Emmett Till videos. You know what I mean? Like we did, we did the story. We did the trial. Um, I actually went to the site and, and talked about it from the site. August 28th, um, we've done memorials. So, you know, when you see me talking about Emmett Till, you got to know it's something just something a little bit different than what I've already spoken on. It ain't really much left for me to, to do. I don't really like redundant content. But I did see a hole in what I've put out. And it's based on what, it's based on what society has put out. And so I want to talk about that third man for a minute because any account of the Emmett Till murder, and I mean any, I, I was looking last night to make sure, again, any and every account of the Emmett Till case, it always goes back to two men, two white men. And there's an issue there because there were at least four people involved initially. Okay, so you got the two men who we know were acquitted. You got Carolyn, right? Everybody know about Carolyn. That's that's who we talking about today. That's who I'm saying that's 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 who the, the, the um warrant was found for and then this this mystery man. Okay, and we know they were involved because of how the evidence has been laid out early on. Now, as time goes by, then yeah, things change. Stories change, information drops off of the story, you don't hear it as much. And so subsequently, we haven't heard much about the involvement of the third man. And so that's why I wanted to just talk about it briefly. Like I said, I'm not going to hold you forever. I'm not going to hold you that long. But I do want you to understand that all of this was documented in its time. And when I do my Black History Daily, I come across things that make me wonder why these things aren't discussed. And so Look Magazine did a story about the Emmett Till murder, and we talked about it because it was basically a confession. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's, it's nothing nothing really less than a confession. This, this Look Magazine story was a confession, and they were able to tell their story about what they did to Emmett Till to a magazine after being acquitted for the murder. And this is why the state tried to get them for kidnapping later and it just didn't quite work out. The attempt to attach a charge to that third man, it wasn't there, no more than it was there in an attempt to charge Carolyn Bryant. And we need to realize that we got more energy for that now than what they had back then. And that's why nothing was done. You see, if they take some of that energy back then and apply it, who knows how this turns out? I mean, after all, they did secure an indictment. We can say what we want to say about the oppressive system, about how they got off with it, but they did get the indictment, okay? They did come back and try to get a kidnapping case. It wasn't just cut and dry. Okay, the federal government thought Mississippi was going to burn forever over this. And so they thought that they were going to have to get justice. But when you make it easy for them, and they don't even have to tell you the truth, because we're talking about, yes, an approved killing, right? They, they don't have to get justice. So this is what I want us to take a look at. September 29th, 1955. 
a month after Emmett Till is murdered, an article appears in Jet Magazine asking, hey man, where that third man at, fam? Now this is real time, and this is why I really like to do my content with primary sources that were there at the time. If if, if it wasn't if it, if it wasn't written in 1925, I got to really take what I'm seeing with a grain of salt. If it's written in 1925, we can roll with it, okay? And so Jet Magazine in 1955 is asking, "Hey man, where that third dude at?" And because I've never seen an article titled that, I've only heard whispers of the third man. That jumped out at me, fam. I've only heard whispers of a third man involved. I've never seen direct evidence of someone saying, hey, we know about that third man. And so I thought it was important to say, all right, look, y'all, this is this is another piece of evidence that would go along with that Emmett Till case that you don't hear about. They printed this up in Jet Magazine. So let's let, let's uh, let's go through this right quick. I want you to I want you to hear what it is that was being said at this time when you know it's really had it just happened. It it literally just happened. So their understanding of it would be different than the one we have now, much, much later. Where is the third man in the Teal lynching? When news of the Mississippi kidnapping of 14-year-old Emmett Teal was first flashed across the nation several weeks ago, right? Because again, this is 1955, fam. A month has passed, just one month. So when it flashes across the nation weeks ago, reports indicated that they were searching for three men and a woman right? Three men and a woman. That was the night raiding party that dragged the youth off. Off top. First first paragraph. If the initial reports are they looking for three men and a woman, okay, well, we know who the woman is. The woman is Caroline. The three men? Well, we know who two of them are. Well, what's up with this mystery third man who throughout history we ain't really drug out and talked about. We talk about oppression, the white man, white supremacy, all of this shit. But there's a whole man involved in this Emmett Till case that has never received any scrutiny. The woman identified as Mrs. Roy Bryant, at whom young Emmett Till wolf whistled, was not taken into custody because she has two youngsters. Mm hmm Yep. You know, they can find an old Barry Warren in a basement. But see, now we know, right? This is why it's important to do this content. Everything else, everybody else doing fake, fam. I'm just telling you. The reason why that Warren was put in the basement it's because she had two kids to take care of. You see it right there. The sheriff told you right there in Jet Magazine that she's got two kids to take care of, so we're not taking her into custody. There's your answer for her. The sheriff told you. She's got children. We ain't taking her to jail. We ain't her involved. We ain't, we ain't involved her in this. So now, just keep in mind, in 2022, when you got people running around talking about this, Asking a question, well, the question was answered in 1955, why she's not going to jail. The question was answered in 1955, why she's not on the hook for it. She got kids. She's innocent, right? But this week, as the trial got underway in Sumner, Mississippi, the big question has remained, where's the third man? You hear me? As the trial gets underway in Sumner, Mississippi, the quick, the big question remains. Where's the third man in the tail lynching? Though mentioned only sketchily in early news reports and completely dismissed in later developments, 
the third man for all immediate legal purposes appeared to be entirely guiltless. Fam, if you're there on a late night raid going to scoop somebody for a kidnapping, though, bro, they, you're not guiltless, right? <laughs> 1955 mentality, though. We'll let her go. She got kids. We ain't bothering her. And this other man, he ain't do nothing, fam. Don't worry about him. We got the two people we want. Now, now listen, the article goes on to read, yet proof that he was a member of the kidnap party, if not one of the lynchers, has been furnished by more than one witness. Now, listen, fam, that's merch right there. Now, how is it that this third man is able to escape black history? Because when we hear the Emmett Till story told over and over and over and over by people, they don't refer to the third man. They refer to her. They'll, they'll point to Carolyn. But you don't hear them referring to the third man. He was only mentioned initially, sketchily in early news reports, but they got proof of him. More than one witness is acknowledging that yes, 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 there was a there was a third man. The night that Emmett Till was last seen alive, his great uncle, Reverend Moses Wright, told authorities that he was taken away by Bryant and Milam, who he identified. And they he they hustled Emmett Till to a car in which Mrs. Bryant, Carolyn, and a third man sat waiting. Yeah. See, he's there on the kidnapping. So why are we assuming he ain't there for the murder? Further proof that he not only accompanied the accused murderers on the night ride, but also entered the home has been substantiated by Reverend Moses Wright's wife, Elizabeth. So he didn't just stay in the car, right? Because I'm not going against Reverend Moses Wright's wife. If she's saying that it was another man there and that he actually came in the home, well, shit, he did. I just wonder why we don't hear that version of events. If we understand how the teaching goes and it's taught wrong and people want to change the story up. Okay, we have the witness, a black woman, who says, yes, a, a, a third man came into my home. But that never transfers into black history. Like I said, one more time, further proof that he not only accompanied the accused murderers on the night ride, but also entered the right home was substantiated by Reverend Moles Wright's wife, Elizabeth. It was she who, having been told of the wolf, wolf, wolf excuse me, of the wolf whistle incident, right? Because she heard about it. She made a vain effort to waken young Emmett Till before the men entered the room where he was sleeping. Once the men burst into the room, she apologized for the darkness and went to get a light bulb. Shut up and get back in the bed. If you don't, I'll beat the hell out of you, is what one of the men said to her. Okay? So this is all under duress. This is all under threat. It was this one, she says, who was the third man in their home that night. Slender, tall, young. But beyond that, no further identification can be made. This white man. That's why I say, man, it's only, it's only a certain amount of this you can do before you got to acknowledge that this is the real. Some white man went in this woman's house and told her he had beat the hell out of her. Right? It, th that, this is the real 1955. It's the Emmett Till case. 
I guess we should acknowledge that they didn't do this to the whole family. They just took Emmett Till, right? Let's let it be known that she identified a third man who threatened her. And because of the situation, it's all happening rapid. I'm sure if she don't know him, she probably couldn't identify him. It's all happening right now. Dude threatening her and all that. It's probably not even worth it for her to try to get his identity. For this reason, the third man may never be brought to trial. Reason number one, why the third man should probably be brought, excuse me, reason number one, the, why the third man will never be brought to trial is what well, Reverend Moses Wright, who had only one shell for the shotgun in his home on the night of the kidnapping, has since had his own life threatened. And so he may never give the authorities who the third man was. His wife fled Mississippi. And she has judiciously decided to not return as a witness. See, the people who held the key to that third man were intimidated out of talking about it. The one dim hope, however, that the identity of the third man may be revealed before the trial, it lies in the tenth statement from the deputy sheriff by the name of John A. Cothran. The sheriff said, we believe that there is another man and we will get him before we are through. But even this hope goes glimmering when a sift is made of the clues not uncovered by authorities. To date, the murder weapon has not been found. The auto used by the kidnappers has not turned up. The used clothing has not been recovered. And finally, the scene of the crime has never been established. The scene of the crime has never been established, they say. The, the, the scene of the crime, it's never been established. Now, that's an insult to those of us who know the story. But whatever happens in Sumner, Mississippi this week, the third man issue will not be overlooked by the NAACP. As counsel for Mamie Teal, the NAACP says they will file $100,000 lawsuits against Carolyn Bryant, Milam, and uh, Bryant, the, the, the three that they have, but the fourth man they were going to name as a John Doe, the fourth person, third man, should I say, to make sure I clarify that, fourth person, third man. They're going to file him as a John Doe. Now, here's where the third man story takes the turn because there's always been a third man involved, just not put in the context of being the third man. But if Emmett Till was murdered on J.W. Milam's brother's property, right? because they didn't murder him on either one of their properties. This happened at a location unrelated to the two defendants. And the only relation that we can tie to the two defendants is that it's his brother's property in which the actual murder of Emmett Till took place at. We know that because we've heard about the truck. We heard about the whipping of Emmett Till in this garage, there were witnesses. And so it's known that J.W. Milam's brother owned this property in this garage. So the automatic assumption should be, well, shit, he's the third man, right? What are we, what are we assuming that the third man is anybody else for? If it's his brother, the murder took place on 
his property is not even questioned. It's not a matter, it's not a question in history where the murder took place. They didn't talk about it back then. See what I'm saying? They played dumb back then and didn't bring out the entire understanding that if it happened on your brother's property, are we sure your brother isn't involved? They played dumb on that. But why would this happen on his property and he just get cleared of it? Don't nothing get said about him. Now, again, it's not us saying this as looking for a way to bring up Emmett Till. Just looking for a reason to talk about him and reach for racial cryberry baby narrative. That's not that's not what this is. There was a report that four men were involved at one point. There were reports that four men were involved and then those were dismissed to say two, but we can show three. So again, it's so muddy in terms of what the real is. It would be up to us to at least acknowledge that there was a third man. And again, I'm assuming that if this happens on your property, it's your brother, you're aware of all the situation and what's happened. Yeah, you with it. You don't mind this happening on your property because you were there for the kidnapping. You don't mind this happening on your property because you're the man who threatened Elizabeth Wright in the dark, the third man. Leslie Milam, J.W. Milam's brother. That's who I think the third man is. They don't just take you off to some random garage owned by someone's brother and the person doesn't know you're inside their garage whipping someone. Literally murdering someone in someone else's garage, your brother, and he don't know it? See, it doesn't sound right. And like I said, because they were so bold about it in later years, they told reporters where they took him to. They told the story proudly because it happened that way. We, are, we have no other choice but to believe that the people involved would have been close to them. It, we're not talking about strangers. We're not talking about people just getting in on a lynching. We're talking about people who had something to gain or lose from this. And that's the Milam and Bryant family that has something to lose. Okay, J.W. Milam's brother owning that property should have been a red flag from the jump. And because now it's so it's so much long after, I don't expect us to ever get anything more than what we have now. I just I just need us to understand that the way we talk about it, we're not talking about a third man being involved either. You know what I'm saying? We don't present this like there was a third man involved, and not just the third man involved, that it was written out. That, that 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 there's there's documented history of an investigation pointing to a third man yet when we discuss it when we talk about it we're only talking about two men we're only talking about Carolyn Bryant like I say the fact that your brother is in on this it happens at his barn he's not brought in to testify against you He's not put on the table as a matter of historical record. Like, well, why you let him do that in your barn, fam? Like, there's no documented record of J.W. Milam's brother having been questioned by the FBI about being involved. It's the mysterious third man. And like I say, it's, it's your home that this happened at. 
How could it? How could it be? Just so simple, you know that it, because to me he should be the first one clear if he's not guilty. He, he should he should be easy to clear, and because it seems he's the he's the the X factor. He's the one that that you don't hear about. And looking for pictures of him. I say his name is Leslie Milam. Try to find some pictures of him. This happened in his barn. Try to find something related directly to him to to bring it to, to, again, the possibility of this man being involved, of him being the person that went inside the house. There's not much of a trail there for you to follow, fam. There's not much of a trail there for you to follow. There would have needed to be more research done in 1955 pointing at that angle, and well, they know it. It's sad. Now, again, the fact that people were able to identify who did the kidnapping, what happened when they actually caught them should have been more about everyone involved. She should have been there. You know what I'm saying? Like, Carolyn should have been there. And that's why, like, today's cap about it and all that is just not real because the fact that it wasn't pressed back then, you can't get nothing done now. Yeah, it's impossible to get something done now, but, I mean, let's be real. She was supposed to be, you know, she's supposed to get accused way back then. I don't like the idea that so many people were witnesses and brought forth their version of events, discussed how all of this happened, what it was they knew, and again, they're able to give us the parts of the story that they want us to know, but the intellectual value of it is lost. And so again, Historically, when you look at this story, you're going to keep seeing the same versions because don't nobody want to give you the parts of it that might lead us to asking new questions, better questions than the ones we're asking now. Okay, again, just know that this all happened on Leslie Milam's plantation and people saw it. People knew. So if you're telling me that J.W. Milam did this at his brother Leslie's home, yeah, his, his brother Leslie's on the hook. If Carolyn Bryan is there on the night ride to go pick him up, Carolyn Bryan is there to go pull the kidnapping on Emmett Till. But they say that she's a mother, so we're not going to arrest her. There's your problem. Some of the stuff that we talk about today is not from the correct angle. This is where you get rid of the personal vendettas and start dealing with the issues of a state like Mississippi. You can't go into these different conversations thinking about slavery and lynchings and blah 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 some of this you've got to deal directly with the evidence you're talking about in the story you're talking about specifically and so if we're talking about Emmett Till and a buried warrant well why was that warrant buried well like I said it's documented why it was buried it was buried because she had children it's documented I, I don't understand why we don't use actual documentation when we have it. I mean, it, it'd literally be right there for us to see. 
And so, like I said, when it comes to the Emmett Till case, I don't think people are going to necessarily change the way they talk about it. I mean, because again, we we don't have the identity of the third man. We pretty much had to write him out of history because of that. And I'm saying, nah, let's write him back in. Because if, if we know that some of the things that are happening are based on us saying we don't know history, we talk wrong, and so this is why our kids don't care. So I've got a lot of dummies running around. Maybe we just need to tell everything, tell the truth and tell everything. These are sad stories that came out of 1955, Emmett Till's case. All that's a sad story. But I do think that we got to give it in a way where it's going to help black people. It's not going to not gonna have you just sitting around saying Emmett Till. And, you know, it's, it's people that think Emmett Till was the gateway to dating white women. Like, like Emmett Till was somehow a sacrifice for black men to get access to white women. I've heard it all in regard to the Till case. But what I don't hear is people talking about that third man. I don't hear people talking about how she accompanied them on the night ride. A lot of times people are just talking about the wolf whistle that she told her husband, and that's why it's her fault. Nah, she was there. That's why it's her fault. She was there. She was a participating member. And yes, for that, it should be an L. It should be. But like I said, I I can um I can only give you this the way it is. Oh, you ain't you ain't never heard Emmett Till was reparations. That's interesting because I, I heard it on Nyla's channel. One of them stupid callers. I I see if I can find it. One of those stupid callers on, on Wifey channel. Was going back and forth. And um, yeah, he said that Emmett Till was reparations. Excuse me, that white women were reparations. And Emmett Till was more of a sacrifice. Yeah, I, I'll never forget that. Because again, those are the things that I've heard in this space coming from men. And then people act like it's something wrong with me, like I'm crazy for my stance. Like, nah, I'll, I'll always remember that because it'll be a point of contention when I'm doing my content. And so, like I said, I, I just want us to not be assholes about shit um, and, and say, well, nah, you know it's the third person. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't saying we got to be assholes about it, but we need to get more adamant about the real history. You know what I'm saying? It can't just be, hey, fam, check it out. We, you know, we do the Emmett Till story, boom, the two white men, blah, blah, blah. Can we at least add on the fact that there were four people who came to steal him, kidnap him, three of them were men, and only two of them have ever been brought to charges. Only two of them have ever been in front of a courtroom. Only two of them are identified. We don't have a positive ID on no third man. And that's fucked up. Um, I got like for real. As a person who does history, I'm salty for real. And I can't, I can't even find people kicking it around. You know what I mean? You know how, you know how people will sit around and talk about what happened at Roswell. You know what I mean? People, will, people will debate every incident in American history and what happened and how it went. You don't find people talking about this third man. You know what I mean? You can find people talking about Al Capone and all of that shit for centuries. But, but there's not one there's not one analysis of this case in which the third man was, was used to write a book or make a movie because you know this movie they finna make, they're not finna have no shadowy figure. They're not going to have no shadowy third man in the cut, okay? They're going to show you two white men. All right? 
I'll show you two white men, and the most they'll tell you about Leslie Milam is that he got a garage, and that's where they're taking Emmett Till to. They're not going to show you the questions that I have, which is, okay, so did his brother know they was in there? Was his brother aware? Why isn't that a important point? See, this is, um, let me touch on this right quick. See, this is to me where the problem comes in, right? This is where they start steering us wrong at. See, her lying ain't a crime. <laughs> like, just telling you straight up. She can lie all she wants to. She can lie whatever about she want to lie. For, for us, we have to stop mentioning the fact that she lied. So the fuck what? Because he did whistle at her. Okay. He didn't touch her. But he whistled at her. That is irrelevant. It's not the police who arrested Emmett Till based on a false charge. So her lying to her husband is irrelevant. That's, that's how they done took us off track talking about her. She lied. She lied. So the fuck what? That ain't what got Emmett Till killed. You know, someone's physical actions got him killed. A lie don't mean shit. Why do we keep on going back to her? Especially when she didn't even get arrested. They didn't even get her. If any time it was time to talk about her, it was in 1955. See, years down the road, now when we look back and we see them saying, hey, we let her go because she had kids. And didn't nobody say nothing? Where Big Bad Malcolm and them at, fam? <laughs> them brothers, them, them Nation of Islam brothers, where everybody at, man? I didn't think so. Like I say, when it comes down to it, that third man is most likely J.W. Milam's brother. And there, there's, no, there's been no historical analysis on that, fam. You said he never whistled at her. <laughs> what? <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. Y'all ain't y'all ain't did your research. Oh, he whistled at her, fam. What are you talking about? Oh, he definitely whistled at her. What do you mean? His own people merged that. That's what I'm saying. We can't like we're 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 riding off of stories that we believe. Nah, fam, his own people. His, his family told the police and everybody that, yeah, he whistled at her. He ain't touch her. The claim was the touching. The whistle was just something that they used in the media, the wolf whistle. Oh, he whistled at her. Which, again, though, ain't a crime. In 1955, we had to lie. About shit like that. You ain't got to lie about no shit like that now. Yeah, the, the little nigga whistled at her. There's too much evidence pointing to that little nigga being from Chicago, being a white woman worshiper, because ain't nobody taught him no different, right? Let's be real. Ain't nobody taught the young nigga to stay the fuck away from white bitches. Like they ain't taught none of the rest of these people. That's why years before and years later, man, don't get me started. I'm just telling you, don't get me started. I'm the last person you want going in on this. <laughs> like the years before Emmett and the years after Emmett, where was the warning to stay the hell away from white women? I was about to say, the hundred years before him and since, it still ain't no warning to stay away from white women. That little nigga wasn't ever told that. He saw a white woman that he thought he could take a take a little stab at in the middle of nowhere he's a kid ain't no big deal he, he blew it <laughs> he fucked up he, he young man he don't know no better 
But lying about it years later, that ain't going to help us, fam. He whistled at her. Mm-hmm. But um, that's the problem right there is they use the whistle to add on a touch that never happened. See what I'm saying? They, they, the, the media initially tried to say he touched her. That's how they got people to give a turn a blind eye. He touched her. He did this and he whistled at her. So the whistle thing is more of a louder statement that he did do to cover up what he didn't do. See what I'm saying? And the fact that her husband was embarrassed is why Emmett Till had to die. Oh, you don't know, you don't know where Emmett Till's dad was? Ooh. Oh. Oh, oh, I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah. Emmett Till dad was um, you know, he was another one of these men that again, y'all ain't y'all, you're not putting information out about um, you know, about how men are chasing white women, how White women can get men killed. All this shit in the 40s and 50s. And so, um, we've got to know better. Emmett Till's dad died for the same reason Emmett Till did. His dad died for the same reason. You're not supposed to be messing with no white women in the 40s, 50s, 30s, 20s, 60s, nigga, the 2000s, nigga. Okay, they they kidnapping motherfuckers, killing motherfuckers, lynching motherfuckers. And you got a sexual deviant like Emmett Till dad. There's no reason to believe that Emmett Till was told that he shouldn't be messing with no white women. The North is not the same as the South in that regard. I think you can get kidnapped and disappeared up North, but you're not going to get quote unquote lynched in 1955 up North, like, like talking about it. And so the fact that it happened to Emmett Till coming from Chicago in one summer, it changed everything. I don't think that if this was a young Mississippi boy, it would even got this much traction. Only reason why this caught that type of traction, a young Chicago boy down in Mississippi. And like I said, it took Emmett Till to lose his life for the Justice Department to start getting involved in some of this. And, you know, again, when you look at the history, it started really cranking up from here. This is this is the pivotal moment in history, you know. This is that 1955 block where George W. Lee gets assassinated. Then Brown versus the Board of Education happens. Then the Emmett Till murder happens. It get ugly. Yeah, Brother Moses, I... I don't like the idea of um, Reverend Mose not busting that shot, though. I don't like that. You know what I'm saying? He got one gun, he got one gun, one bullet, one shot. Bust that motherfucker. Fuck it. I, that's what I don't like. I don't think he could have physically stopped three men, though. But he was supposed to bust, though. You got one shot, boom, nigga. Whatever happened after that. You know what I'm saying? Somebody else took an L too. That's my only. That's my only issue with 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 the old man. You know what I'm saying? It ain't just no. Oh man, he was old man. Yeah, dog. But shit, you got a shotgun for a reason, bro. Like, there's a re. There's a reason you got a shotgun. You might have to use it. Now I get it. You outnumber, but man, fuck that, fam. They gonna take Emmett Till. This shit better be a full blown tragedy, nigga. And that's why, like I said, I don't like how the later years we we have responded to it because it's it's just a lot of tears. 
fact of the matter is it should be more of an intellectual investigation into why this third man ain't get involved in 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 the uh the judicial process and it should be further investigated why today we're talking about a bury warrant when it's documented that they didn't want to arrest her in the first place she wasn't going to jail anyway and that's why like i said the, it's important for black people to do media because they're not telling us that a whole argument was made about her you know it, it, she she literally is there and so like i say man if you take that one shot and buck her ass shit. <laughs> hey <laughs> Looking back at history, if if Moe's right, takes that one shot and guns down Carolyn Bryant, fuck it. At least it was worth it. She got away with this and is still alive today. And like I said, the conversation surrounding her is usually she lied. You know what I mean? It's usually about something to do with getting whistled at. It ain't got nothing to do with being there on the night ride. It ain't got nothing to do with her being there for that kidnap. It ain't got nothing to do or do with her being there for that lynching. See, she was there when they tied that motherfucking fan around his neck. She was there when they put him in that water. And that ain't nothing I've heard talked about intellectually. Now, I'm going to say this. I'll let y'all go. I'm going to say this. If we have documentation of things that have happened in the 1950s that people aren't actually trying to get information out about, what makes you think that there will ever be a real reparations conversation or a chance at reparations? I'm getting to the point where I want to know what you think we can get reparations for. Like, for every time I'm looking at some history, I, I like I said, man, join my Patreon, look at Black History Daily, and you'll understand why I ask these questions and why I do this content the way I do it. It is, it is not, our history is not what people say it is, dog. Like I say, man, it's some fucked up shit that happened in history. But um, niggas had some chances they wasn't taking, fam. And I'm saying more often than not i'm seeing evidence of chances that weren't taken yeah you got your lynchings you got your oppression you got your bullshit but man it's a lot of our history that's being covered up i'm gonna be doing a video later on today it'll probably be up to there tomorrow about rebecca johnson okay it's on my community wall right now, but I got to make a video about this, man. I got to make a video about it. 1882. The brightest comet ever seen in the United States comes whizzing by a woman in Kentucky. She looks up, identifies it, tells everybody, and she's credited with being the first person to see it. I've never heard Rebecca Johnson referred to in a scientific conversation, in a conversation about no, no comment, nothing. Okay. The reason I'm saying this is because it's called the Great Comet of 1882. It's a well-known historical event, a phenomenon in which at that time, people thought it was the end of the world type shit. A black woman is credited for discovering that comet. It just don't bear her name. Now, it was seen in other places in I'm not saying she's the first person in the world, 
but she's the first person in the United States. It is crazy that historically, not only does she not get credit for it, but we're not even trying to give her credit. So I'm going to drop that video because, like I say, man, I don't just do this content for nothing, man. I'm coming across shit I, I would have never thought. I never would have thought a black woman would have seen a comment in the 1880s. There's a story written up of it. So by, by those standards, if she's the first person that saw it in the United States, she, quote, unquote, discovered it in the United States. That's how this shit works. You know what I'm saying? And she's not getting credit for that. So I want to do a video about it. I'm going to put it up and I'm going to show you. And like I said, it's just so many different things you come across. I came across this about this third man, this Emmett Till case, as a piece of a Jet Magazine article. Like it literally was just an article in a Jet Magazine from... What was that? September 29th, 1955. Let me pull that up right quick before we get up out of here. So you can see what I'm talking about. That that article in itself was enough for me to say, okay, yeah, we don't have any real conversations about shit. Like, there's no way they can put this on a magazine and we don't question where we are today with it. Now, look at this. September 29th, 1955, Jet Magazine. Up in the top right corner, you see where it says, where is the third man in Emmett Till lynching? And like I say, I, I do this content for real, so when I see some shit like that, I'm going to look into that. This is what we're supposed to be doing. And because this is a source, from back then, one month later, yeah, dog, this is the best. This is the best indication that yeah, there was a third man involved. You can you can have all the futuristic conversations you want to have. We ain't even got a lock on the past yet. Okay, this is one month later. This is probably the last chance to get the third man conversation on the table, and it went away after this, and so. I don't expect to see much conversation about that third man, which is, again, why I thought I should do a video about it, speak on it, show it, show where I'm getting it from, show why I'm saying it. And, you know, maybe, maybe we'll never know more about it, but at least you'll know that it was the word. That was the word on the streets for him. It's the third man involved. Go grab him. And, again, Emmett Till people had to leave Mississippi in fear. They had to live in silence for the rest of their lives over that shit. So I just I just want us to be more productive with how we teach in the history. It can't just be the Emmett Till and Emmett Till. Like, fam, you gotta, it's gotta be some context with this when we're giving it. And sometimes it's just, it's just not. Sometimes we're just saying it and it's more to the story, it's more information available. And I want I say, man, you got people out there like. Like Brother Moses out there, for example, like he do research. He know a lot of shit. You know I mean, maybe maybe one little piece of information I drop can can lead to him showing something that I missed. And, and boom, we, we found it. We, we unlocked the little key that, you know what I'm saying, that, that people wasn't looking at. That's why I got to do this shit. Because maybe that one little piece of information we uncover is going to open up a, a, a treasure trove of information. I just I just hope we... Hope we someday realize that if we got an opportunity to pass meaningful shit on, and if if you're not gonna do it, don't complain about what the white man teaches, because he's teaching the same old stories. And if we're not gonna do anything to change that, just be ready for the same old story to be taught to your kids and stop blaming the person doing the teaching. You don't wanna do nothing for it yourself. You don't wanna change it, you don't wanna be a part of the change. Just be quiet then. You know. I see us being a, a more intelligent group of people than what most realize is because we ain't doing the work intellectually. We're not doing the work. So I'm just here to present it so y'all will see it. Like I said, I know it's 
it's other scholars out there. You got beige Negroes out there. You know what I'm saying? Like real, it's, it's hella scholars that, that slide through here. And, you know, I, I expect someday some of this to actually matter in, in a way that's, that's bigger than just, and they killed him and Till. Like, nah, fam, they teaching us this shit wrong. And the fact that we can't even get it from each other, that's scary to me. We need to be at least able to tell each other about the third man, about the incident, about the problem, about what happened. We can't do that. We wasting time on here. So that's it. I just wanted to bring that to you so you could see it, see what, see what um see what my mind was working on as I'm looking into this and trying to find more information about Leslie Milam and can't find it. Trying to find more information about how this brother's barn was used, can't find it. It's just cut and dry. Two men did this to Emmett Till. They used the brother garage. No, there's nothing surrounding that part of the story. What happens when they get there is only told by them and a few other witnesses, but we don't have a direct connection to his brother other than knowing that's your brother, you're using his garage. It's safe to say he's the third man. And that's where I'm at with it. And I wanted to bring that to you because I have not heard that third man in the Emmett Till case spoken on. I've never heard anybody talking about it. As many times I've heard Emmett Till reference, I've never heard anybody reference that third man. And so, like I said, man, we got to we gotta get the wheels turning in the, in the quote unquote black community. Got to get the intellectual wheels turning, man, and stop this. Stop this just believing shit because we we think it. We got we to stop that shit. So I think that's it, man. I think I got everything out I needed to get on that. Like I said, I got video coming later on. Maybe tomorrow. It depends. My 49ers don't play today. So, you know, I just be sitting back watching. Sitting back watching Brother Moses Saints get ran through. <laughs> <laughs> T Wheels, New York Giants are gonna lose. <laughs> Whatever team you're a fan of, they're gonna lose. Just for the record. You know what I'm saying? I know y'all wanna talk trash, right? I wanna talk trash about my boys. <laughs> Don't worry about us. We'll be all right. Y'all gonna lose today. One thing that we know for sure, without no doubt, the 49ers ain't going to lose today. <laughs> the 49ers ain't going to lose today. We know that. Now, y'all, the jury out on y'all. We'll, we'll wait to see what happened with y'all. You know, good luck, everybody. You know what I'm saying? But one thing we know for sure is at the end of this day, you won't be talking about no damn 49ers loss. You know what I'm saying? We be talking about one of y'all teams. So, I don't know, man. I keep on saying I'm gonna come back, man. Do some sports. I just, uh, I, I just, I. It's so hard for real. Cause I be, I be just locked in with the serious content. It's so hard to put some hours in on sports and having fun and whatnot. But I'm trying to transition. I'm trying to transition and turn the news into more of an upload thing and the live streams into more interact interaction and fun and so i'm trying to like create two different conversations you know one conversation will be the one that we do the videos about and the other ones will just be the the fun ones that aren't so serious all the time so i haven't got the balance yet i'm still serious as fuck you know what i'm saying so i that's why i haven't done any sports content because i gotta gotta put some of what i do as serious content down to be able to have fun and actually grow a fun sports channel. So I, you know what I'm saying? I'm working on myself here with that. When Hollywood recreates the MT, I bet they decide to include the boxers firing, boxing DB, rape charge in Italy, as well as the third man's barn. Yeah. They're gonna be playing games with that story, man. You know, I hate 
these different little renditions of history they be making and shit, bro. I hate that shit. And so, you know, I'll probably never watch none of it. I'll hear about it, though. And that'll be enough to insult me to come on here and go live and talk about a TV show I've never watched. Because that's what's going to happen. You already know. You already know what's going to happen with me. The movie going to come out. People going to talk about it. I'm going to come right on here. I'm going to drag the movie. And I ain't never watched it. <laughs> <laughs> that's just it just is what it is man you know I me mean? i'm against netflix and hulu and all these people telling our history fam. i'm against that shit i hate that shit and so you can you can bet your bottom dollar taz will be on here dragging that movie and ain't seen one minute of it <laughs> all right let me shout these cash apps all right quick man for the other day man because I ain't been on in a few days. I was literally working on trying to get all this content back up. And I still got some other channels and shit. Like I said, I'm working on other channels and whatnot. But, man, it'd be difficult, man, because YouTube, like, jump, making me jump through all these hoops and whatnot. So I appreciate all the support. They be just demonetizing channels. They hate the news. Like, I literally have to take a video off, wait 30 days, and then they'll re-monetize the channel again. So if... Your subscription got paused. Your membership got paused. It's because they demonetize the channel. They always do it. Um, I, it's a news story I do, and then they'll just demonetize the channel. I gotta take that news story off, and then they'll remonetize the channel again. So for these 30 days, I generally just hit it hard, just do whatever the hell I want to on here, and just, you know what I'm saying, put any type of stories up, whatever. But after that 30 days, you know what I'm saying? That to get my super chat and all of that back, I'd usually take all of that off and put it on Patreon or another channel. But this is why, you know what I'm saying, I started getting reckless as hell for that for them 30 days. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, they've already taken my monetization for no reason. Like it's literally just because of a video I did. Um, and it's not even a bit it's crazy because I, I do videos dragging niggas. They don't, it ain't ever one of those videos. It's a video about something that happens to a child. It's always a video about something that happens to a woman. It's never one of these videos where I'm dragging one of these dudes. So, you know what I mean? I just, you know, I don't stop doing the content because they demonetize the channel. I just change the way I'm doing it. So if you have any concerns like, oh, man, you ain't been live lately. It's just because I've been doing uploads. You know what I'm saying? it has been doing hella uploads. And um, because they don't they don't like the news. So, you know, I got to do it one at a time. So I'm working on it. So let me see. I got I got Dorothy Talbert here on the cash app. Thank you, Dorothy. And I got your despicable with a, a she she cash apps me daily. Daffy girl, you're despicable. You're despicable, Daffy girl. Thank you. Thank you very much for your concerted effort to support this channel because like I said I'm I'm always be working on on um getting content out they'll try to demonetize the channel to hopefully stop you from doing whatever content you do I guess I'm not gonna stop putting some of these important messages out though I cannot do videos talking about these YouTube people and whatnot but when it comes to certain stuff I'm gonna just put it out and Maybe I should take some of them down, um, and most of them I do. But the stories I leave up, sometimes they come back and ding me for it. And so I just end up having to start over again. So I'm saying again, it's 27 more days. You know what I mean? This channel will be back monetized. We'll be all right. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no big deal. So until then, you got to hit the cash app or the PayPal. You got 30 days. <laughs> 30 days in, in um monetization jail. <laughs> it's like for real, this this is literally will be the third time this year that they took away my monetization for a month. As long as they give it back. You know what I'm saying? But it'll be the third time this year they took it away for a month. Crazy. Like I said it's all because you know you do conversations and content on some of the news that the mainstream wants to be the only ones that control. Hold on. You said you sent me a cash out. Let me go check and make sure before I get off of here. 
We got 30 minutes until kickoff. We got 30 minutes till kickoff. Okay. Let's see. Okay, Kelly sent me a cash app. Thank you, Kelly. This was not a sermon, Kelly. <laughs> Making me feel like we're in the church some goddamn where, man. <laughs> we ain't no, this ain't no sermon. This ain't no church. <laughs> All right, let me see. That's how I make rep reparations practical for you. The current legislation against collective collusion. Yeah, we you know what though, brother Moses, man, we ain't did one in a while though, man. We gotta we gotta have a um reparations conference. We ain't had one in a while. I'm pretty sure you got something already put together um for it. So hit me up, man, on your your next free day, man, before you get ready to do some shit, man, so I can schedule one because we haven't talked about a reparations thing in a while, and I did see a, a funny title yesterday, man. I saw a funny-ass title yesterday. That shit said, I refuse to let a former pimp... <laughs> I refuse to let a former pimp and failed rapper be the voice of reparations. I've seen it. <laughs> oh, I've seen it. I refuse to let a, a, a former pimp and a failed rapper become the face and voice of reparations. Oh, I saw it. <laughs> and I agree. <laughs> I agree 100%, dude. <laughs> so, yeah, shout out to Michi, man, for being one of the few people that have called these old ass niggas out. You know, I saw it though, fam. Like y'all niggas, y'all niggas following dude like a stupid dog. Shout out to Michi for saying the real. It ain't a lot of people that's willing to say that shit, dog. That nigga ain't finna get you no motherfucking rep. That nigga say, man, look, me and brother Bowles will talk about that later in the week or something. Man, what, what you say? Though? Today is your only today. Today, today, of course it is. <laughs> All right. That I means we have to wait till next Sunday early. I'm just so we'll do it next Sunday morning. Next Sunday morning, we can uh, put together a stream because I ain't, I ain't come back on here today. No live stream. No, no. Uh uh. I got things laid out for today already. Got a little football I want to watch. I said I want to watch all y'all teams lose. Um, I got a little bit of editing to do. And I just got caught up on Patreon, man. Now look, I was I was three days behind. Like you know, what I'm saying like this stuff ain't easy, man. I'm telling you, like I can't wait until January first. So. We can have a real conversation over here about American history, dog. Because, man, some of this stuff I be having to dig up, man. It's, dog, I'm telling you, it's it's a grind getting some of this shit, dog. I'm ready to get some of that easy shit and put that shit out. <laughs> some shit with some white American history, dog. Like, this black history, sometimes I be digging for a whole day. Like, like just, just damn. You know what I'm saying? And then come back looking some more. Still ain't found nothing worthy of posting. Like, I ain't just posting no anything, man. Like, so some days it, I get behind and then I just be like, fuck it, man. Like, fuck, I just lost a day. And then the third day was like, all right, I got to get caught up. And fell behind that day. So I'm now caught up. October 2nd will be up today. Black History Daily. It's on my Patreon. It is just literally 40 or more examples of black history for that day. I post a couple of them on my community wall. And I'm actually going to start a channel doing a couple of those articles as well, right? I ain't going to start a channel. I'm just change one of the ones I got that I don't do anything on to an actual 
channel that I can put content on. Like I, I literally got channels that I don't even fucking use. And I got content that I don't put out. Okay, I gotta bring those two together. But see, like, that's the problem. Now you see how I'm still here talking. I was supposed to be off of here like 10, 15 minutes ago, but I'm still here talking. That's the problem. That's why I said I'm not going to be doing no more live streams, like just sitting here kicking it for content purposes. Like, I mean, like it doesn't, it, it just does not, I do not have to be on here for an hour to tell a story. I'm not going to tell in 15 minutes. I said, sometimes be chilling and, and, and as long as it ain't serious, I'm cool with that. But I'm realizing that because people got a short attention span, it might be better to do serious topics quick and have fun on the live streams. But due to if it's serious, we got to hit it. I do that shit as a discussion on a panel. Maybe we do that shit on Patreon or some shit, but not, not using the live stream time. That. Do I want an omelet? Hell, motherfucking yeah, I want a motherfucking omelet. What? <laughs> what? See what I'm saying? Look at that stupid ass question. Look at that shit. Look, look, look. You know, goddamn well, I want an omelet with some pancakes and some hash browns. <laughs> Kelly says, I want the news back. You know, I can't never fully stay away from the news, but I said I got to slow roll some of it um, because, again, it's it's not um, – it, it's just it, – it's something YouTube don't like about aggregate news. It just They just don't want you putting five, six, seven, eight stories in one video because even when I do it, on in a pre-record on an upload, they won't monetize it. And like I say, it's like they they want to control the information and kind of keep you stagnant with it. Miss Denova out there in the building. I ain't know Miss Denova was still here, man. Shit, I thought Mr. Nova was doing videos and shit about me. Thank you for the cash shot, Mr. Nova. Good to know you ain't dragging me out here, man. I I had looked up the other day. I could have sworn I seen. A video with, with, with you right there on the panel dragging me with everybody else. <laughs> now, nah, let me quit. Somebody start repeating that shit. Somebody else to say that shit. Like, yeah, Mr. Nova was dragging him too. He losing all his supporters. All oh, his day ones flipped on him. Mr. Nova done flipped on him. Dr. G says she don't like him. Penny about to leave. Sugar Babe ain't fucking with him no more. Like, I, I can hear it now, so. We make sure, make sure I say that shit right. <laughs> hey, man, how long may on that omelet, though? Like, how long I got to wait on that there? Like, that, just, that, that just changed the game right there, shit. Like, I, could, I could sit back. I could sit back a, a couple more minutes. I ain't, you know what I'm saying? Cause I was in a rush to go get something to eat. Now, if it's on the way, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> shit. I can sit back and laugh for a few minutes before we actually have to get off of here, you know. Like, damn, I thought I was going to have to make a move. It's already a move being made. Hey, what's up? What's, what's goody? Where you at? Where you at, though? Like, what's, like, what's up? This coming from somewhere else? You making it? When you get here, like, what's the word on the omelet? And, and I don't see her no more, so this is how we're going to do that. This is how we're going to do that. Y'all know it's not a game. Get her right on here. Hello? Hey, what happened to you? We were still looking for you in the chat. You disappeared. I just, I was getting you, um, I was getting about to get you this omelet. I was looking through the one to see the one that you want. Where you at? I'm hot. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, do you want me to just come and pick you up? You want to eat there? Yeah, you can just come and pick me up. That's fine. I, 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 okay. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love to go to dinner with you or breakfast or anything. It's just, oh, it's just such an amazing oh, thing to be. Yeah, it's amazing to be sitting next to you in a public place. Like it's my like, treat. like it's my treat. Yeah. Your, your treat. With, my treat. With which card? <laughs> um, that's, that's, you know, I'm just saying. 
Like that's that's something that men probably need to talk about. Is like women will get a credit card for you that you never use. So how is it mine? Just because my name on it? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> nah. I mean, you can't treat me with my credit card. That's just that's just not. That's I'm not. Here, that's not like like I ain't falling for that one. Like, nah. Exactly why I put it. I added it to my Apple Wallet. <laughs> so if it's in my wallet, technically it's my trade. Yeah. No, your Apple Wallet is it? Actually, no. And I do. I need to up because I only got one of them on my Apple Wallet, and I I got a few things I no, need to add to it. No, you don't got the. You ain't got the one with the big uh, thing on your uh, Apple Wallet because I do. No, I only have only have the um the one from directly from the bank on my Apple Wallet. I don't have a bunch of things on there. I don't I don't yeah, like I all don't that. Know. I don't. But, but for us, let's be honest. You know, listen. Let's be honest. <laughs> I don't like all I'm that. I'm just taking pictures of your debit cards and credit cards and put the information in my phone forever. That sounds illegal as fuck. It's not though. I'm your wife. I have every right to do what I want to do. But it do. Uh, but but it do sound illegal. I took pictures of your credit card and put it. In my yeah, wallet. And I tell all women That's crazy. To do that. I tell all women that when they get into a relationship with a man, especially if it's if you're having a sexual relationship and y'all are together, that they are supposed to, that it is their right to take pictures of credit cards, get the expiration dates and the season C numbers to make sure that they are covered. It is part of being a provider male that you provide pictures of your debit cards. And sometimes we need at least the last name oh, of your social security number and your mom's maiden name. But it's it's part of being a provider bill. Okay, but how many different, because see, they in the chat talking about some Apple Pay. Nigga, how many different Apple Pay cards do you need, though? Like, like I like I got one on there for Apple Pay. Like, how do you need well, see, seven like, different cards I mean, for Apple Pay? You need your, your regular debit card for, like, you know, your regular stuff that you budget to spend, your the regular banking account or whatever, your regular checking account. Then you need that emergency fund just in case it's like, okay, I don't want to limit for what I'm supposed to spend this week, but this has to happen. And then you need, you know, your credit card or whatever. And then you might have a few store cards, you know, on there or whatever, like, you know, big or something like that. Um, you know, you just you just never know. Life presents some circumstances outside of our control and we should always be covered. And I just want you to know that I appreciate you for making sure that I am covered. Um, even without your knowledge, the fact that you are able to cover me without even knowing that that's what you're doing. Well, that, but you know, you know what's a trip though? Um, mm -hmm. When you, when, cause like, I don't always know a lot of that shit. So I do remember one time um, I, I didn't have one of my cars. You actually took it out of my wallet and mm -hmm. you were able to send money from that card to my apple wallet from I, I don't know what the fuck you did but that, yeah. but so yeah i do know i need to put them all in there but i'm cool on that shit that's just it's like i don't want to be in line flipping through cars through my phone and all of that i just need one car for, for one transaction like i, I mean but i'm just but i have to go shopping and stuff i have to go to the grocery store you know the kids, they gon' they be texting and saying stuff. They be needing stuff. You know, you gotta have, you gotta have, you gotta be ready. No, you don't. I mean, I I don't anyway. Like I said, I a lot of that stuff is just it's um it's annoying. You know, what I'm saying if you can just send a cash app to them, it's a fix for me. Um, if you just send them send them a cash app. Boom, it's fixed. They be good. They good though. They don't. They don't really. I think um, baby Shannon, that 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 that's our that's that's the one we can get this right there. Yeah, he's that's um he spoiled, spoiled. He just just, <laughs> just spoiled. Like I say, I like mean, I I tend to agree now. He's he's the child that takes advantage of the. All right, you know I got your back. Just you know stay out of trouble. He's like taking full advantage of that shit. My dad. Yeah, no, uh, what I like is he's a charmer. He'll be like. Ma, he'll text me, he'll say, Ma, and I'll be like, yes. How you doing? <laughs> he'll be like, I'm good. So then he'll start talking about something that he knows that I'm interested in for like five minutes. 
and then he'll, he'll slip it in. He'll be like, you know, I'm at this game. I'm about to go to this game on. Um, so and he'll always give like a two to three day window. He's like, I'm going to games like this stuff, touch me. And um, yeah, we want to do this, and I want to wear. And there's this this thing that I need for the game. And he'll, he, I will say that he will give you about two to three days notice on what he needs, which I now I know because he knows that I just time to go on Amazon and just, you know, put it in the uh, thing and send it to me or whatever. But he's going to give you like a two or three, three day window, which for me, that just means he is waiting. Yeah, that's he's giving me enough time to order it for Amazon. That's too that. sweet right there, man. They can just hit you up like, like, hey, man, I need something like log me into that Amazon account. See, I'm cool yeah, on that. I, I, I tried to send him the. Um, I'm cool on that shit. So that could, uh, I don't. I don't like that, man. Just, just log me into Amazon and go ahead and fill up the cart type shit. Well, I, I ain't I with that. What, no, no, no. I told him what his, what his limit was that he had to order to a certain point. Like he would have to call me and let me know. Like if it's because he don't really ask for expensive stuff. Like if I told him just you know. No, he's gonna like, piece you out to yeah. death. He's gonna piece you to death. That's what he do. He will go. He will piece you to death. That that boy will let me get five, seven, ten dollars out your ass every two days. You look up and you didn't get him a hundred dollars in a week. He'd be like, you got But that's what I'm saying. He do that to me. That's my favorite. He do that to my okay. uncle. You got seven dollars on your cash app, or six dollars the odd one. You got four dollars on your cash app. He's, that's how he pay it. Yeah, I'm telling you, he, do, he, he does that to about seven people and probably probably get like $80, $90 a day, man. I'm telling you, and, and it's just being, like, for real, just not getting in trouble is such a, a big thing that, you know what I'm saying, it, it might be over-celebrated, I guess is my point, because I don't, I don't think that you're just supposed to ignore your kids not getting in trouble and shit, but, like, this nigga take that shit to extremes, like, on some shit like, okay, but th but that's what you're supposed to do though, right? Like you do know you do know staying out of trouble, getting good grades in college. All this is what you're supposed to do. Like motherfucker ain't rewarding you now. Now you're living your life, motherfucker. Like it's it's just hard though, because it's like I said, I still have it necessarily just broke the reins. Like all right, you a man now, go get it. Like I don't I don't know if I'm ever be able to do that. Like he'll have to probably break away from me. Cause I I doubt I'll ever just say all right, man. You cut off, bro. Like you gotta you got to make something happen. I doubt I can ever do that. No, it's I I don't I know I I never understood how why my parents even well into my forties still to me even now they still act like I'm a child sometimes or they view you as they view you as as a child. Um, like but when I look at my kids, like even being grown, sufficient, married with their own kids and stuff. I still see my babies. Mm -hmm. I literally still see my babies. And I know that they're grown. I know that they can do what they want to do, but I literally still look at them. These are my babies. I'd be ready to like, I'd be really just ready to, you know, box something over them. Yeah, I'm ready to cut my phone off when I see a ring with their they motherfucking names on it. That's what I'm ready to do. Oh, ready to remove my last name from theirs and, 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 and make them go in and suffer like like all these other kids have to that ain't got no father. Like for real, take uh -huh. my fucking last name from their asses. Cause they, they starting to get get bold with it. Like, like, dad, you owe me. You you helped give me life and now I'm gonna take yours, nigga. <laughs> 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 all right, I'm on you outside. Yeah, I'm in front of the garage. All right, I'll be out in a second. Here I come. Uh -huh. All right, y'all. I'm about to go have breakfast and watch these football games on my phone. Like I said, man, you know, Minnesota Vikings will probably win today. Um, who else? Dallas Cowboys will probably win today. Who else? You said you're an Eagles fan? Yeah. The Jacksonville Jaguars will probably win today. <laughs> Oh, you a Steelers fan, huh? Yeah, the, the New York Jets will probably win today. You know I'm saying? Who else? Are you? Oh, you like the Green Bay Packers? Yeah, the New England Patriots will win today. Your team's going to lose. Hopefully. Ho hopefully none of y'all teams win. 
And that's that's coming to you as a as a 49ers fan who you know it's been a rough go of it for the first couple of weeks. But watch while well, you're a Bears fan, yeah. Y'all game gonna end in a tie with the Giants. Because I ain't rooting for the Giants. I can't even say the Giants gonna win. That's T Wheel team. <laughs> All right, man, let me go. I ain't going to have her sitting out there um, like she would have me because make no mistake about it. Like she had me sitting out there 10, 15 minutes. You know what I'm saying? Like I be sitting there 10, 15 minutes. She in here laughing, kicking, going in, acting like I ain't out there waiting. I ain't going to do her like that because she'll she do me bad. You said, fuck football. I like AR 15. Yeah, see, on that note, let me get up. I'm going to go eat. I, you know how it is out here, man. A, a white boy walk up in the goddamn restaurant with an AR-15 today. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't want to hear about no guns, man. Last time we was talking about some guns, we ended up talking about a man taking his son out to do a drill on a rapper. You know what I'm saying? Niggas ain't even teaching their kids to do the right thing. Niggas teaching their kids to go out and rob niggas out here. But that's a whole other topic, man. I... Let me get up out of here, man. I'll be to start talking about that. Bye. <laughs>